There is no way that I could have predicted what 2020 would bring when I was in Japan in late 2019. There it is, the announcement of Balan Wonderland. Uh... The arcade industry took a huge hit, and with Sega selling off 85% of its arcade business, I'm not confident in the future of game centers in Japan. But Ando, you might be asking yourself, what's this got to do with anime figures? Well, they're more connected than you might think. See, the first floor or two of every Japanese arcade are UFO catches, crane games and other similar skill testers that award physical prizes like plushies and anime figures. The community refers to these as prize figures to differentiate them from premium scale figures you'd spend hundreds of dollars on at a retail store. Their lower quality is sure, but prize figures are an excellent entry point into the hobby that allows people to dip their feet in without emptying their wallet for an expensive scale. It's also a great outlet for people who don't stress about fine details, or those who are on a tight budget to amass a respectable collection for a fraction of the price. The other thing you need to know about arcades is that you can't be fooled by the romantic idea that Japanese arcades are havens for games. As of 2017, only 13% of sales came from video games. More than half of their profits are exclusively from claw machines. These prizes, more than anything else, are what's keeping these businesses open. It makes sense to believe that as arcade attendance declines, they naturally become less profitable. Which brings into the question, the future of prize figures. If there are no arcades to house all of these claw machines, does it make sense for companies to keep making products for those claw machines? Looking at the history and the data, it's definitely a worrying trend that I can't help but feel has been expedited by current world events. And it's not like no one likes prize figures. I'm confident that there is a massive audience for them. Basically, every local store I see at conventions in Australia have a lot of stock, while scales take a major backseat if they're even sold at all. So if these manufacturers keep making them, I'm sure they'd sell. But I've been thinking to myself, what if the prize figure manufacturers don't see the value in keeping up production for the dwindling Japanese market? There's two outcomes that immediately come to mind. Either prize figures completely die out, or manufacturers develop new strategies to keep selling them. I decided to research this a bit by taking a look at the four major players in the prize figure space. Furyu, Banpresto, Taito, and Sega, and checking out the interesting moves they've been making over the last couple of years. So let's go back to late 2018. Furyu dived headfirst into the ocean of premium scale figures with their F-Next line, which already has over 90 figures, matching and even outpacing companies like Ulta and Fat. Their experience making prize figures seems to have allowed them to rapidly expand into this space for better or for worse. All I know is they make a hell of a lot of expensive Mikus that I wish were more affordable. In 2019, Banpresto, which exclusively makes prizes, was folded into the larger Bandai Spirits brand. Interestingly enough, as far as I'm aware, they already have a fairly large presence in the West, by directly selling these through normal retail stores. I was surprised to find that Banpresto products were actually listed on AmiAmi, but they can only be shipped to North and South America. Which to me is kind of strange, but even here in Australia, finding Banpresto stuff is pretty common. Out of the big four manufacturers, Banpresto seem to be the only ones who are really stable and are ready for the future. Moving on another year, in late 2020, Taito, which is one of the big arcade companies, made the same move as Furyu. Their new premium scale figure brand is called Spiritail. Their first two figures are scheduled to release later this year, so we're still yet to see if they're any good. Taito in particular sticks out to me as being the company most desperate to try to diversify. Apparently they're even trying to get back into the console gaming market, but I don't think Space Invaders and Bubble Bubble are going to carry them in the 21st century. And finally, Sega, which I mentioned right at the start of the video. Despite selling off a huge chunk of their arcade business, they still seem like they're interested in producing prizes for arcades. I haven't seen them make any changes to how they're selling figures or what they're manufacturing, it's just business as usual. This strikes me as kind of a weird move, 
but I guess only time will tell if they're happy with this arrangement without ownership of the game centers themselves. So that's the big four. And right now it seems like things are kind of okay and stable, but how this develops over the next few years will be the really interesting part. Prize figures fill a very satisfying niche that I don't think any of them are willing to give up. If arcades do keep taking a turn for the worst, I would expect we'll see Sega and Furuyu to make their figures officially available to straight up pre-order and purchase through retail stores. I'm absolutely confident that there is big money to be made here. And maybe there's a third solution that could make a good compromise. Given that crane games make as much money as they do, what if arcades embraced that? If they downsize and get rid of all the extra floors that video games take up, it seems like they could run a fair business just off the UFO catches, which would command less than half of the current floor space of many arcades that I've been to. There's no doubt that it would be sad to see, but maybe it's the most realistic path for this to go. The future of arcades, and by extension prize figures, are uncertain, but I hope that whatever happens, happens for the best. I'd love to know what you think about this, and if you did enjoy the video, like and subscribe for more. Thanks for watching.